This is DRF, Race of the Day. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF Race of the Day for Sunday, June the 27th, is one of several stakes races at Lone Star Park. Let's take a look at the field for race number 11, the $75,000 Singletary Stakes at a mile and an eighth on the turf. Download free Formulator Pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. You see a very familiar name, Mike, in the number seven, Henley's Joy. This horse has earned over a million dollars in his career, but it's fair to question his current form. Yeah, for whatever reason, this horse, who was actually pretty good as a three-year-old a couple of years ago, Dan, for whatever reason, he just never really panned out, and he hasn't really improved at all over his last couple of campaigns. He has some tactical speed, however, and he certainly fits from a class standpoint. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector because the horse down on the inside, the number one Carly's dream is in very good form. He draws inside and he likes to go to the front. And I think that's exactly where he's going to be after the first quarter mile. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this horse has the inside draw. He's got plenty of early speed. And I agree with you. I feel like he's he's run without the lead before. I, I think he looks like a happier horse when, he, when he's able to make the front and control the action. We'll see if a mile and an eighth is a little far for him. Earlier in his career, he ran a good second at a mile and an eighth at 52 to one in an allowance race. We'll go back to his prep for the Singletary on May the 31st. An allowance event, he was favored. He got away to the pretty easy lead and he sprinted on home. A real nice prep. Now he gets the acid test from a class standpoint, but he fits in this spot. Yeah, I think he does, too. They're going to step him up a little bit here. He did win that allowance race very easily last time. He got control in there, just traveled freely on the lead. Never That race was never in any doubt at all. He was a much the best winner that day. Going back to the last time and only time they tried nine, Dan, he ran really well that day. He took pressure on the lead all the way around the track in there, um, shrugged it off, and just got nailed by the favorite who set a perfect trip. Speaking of a horse that wants a mile and an eighth, I think stretching back out to this distance is key from the number two, me and Mr. C. And I know you've been a fan of this horse, a stakes winner at Tampa, three starts back at this distance against fellow Florida breads. I think he's run some underrated races in his last two down at Gulfstream and is just a snug fit from a class perspective. I look at him the exact same way. This is a pretty cool horse. I mean, he is a really nice fit in this race. He had absolutely no chance last time. In a pace-dominated race, he came wide. He tried to make up ground, but it just wasn't happening in that field. Don't ask, don't tell. The number three had a six-race win streak snapped last time out at Remington Park in November. I thought all in all, the trip was okay. He was able to save ground. There just wasn't a lot of pace for him to run at in this in that race. Now he's going to have to go a mile and an eighth off the layoff, but he loves the cooking at Lone Star, three for three over this turf course. Yeah, I mean, there are things to like about this horse for sure. He is stepping up in class for this. I would worry maybe a little bit about the distance, Dan. We'll see if he if he handles it. I mean, I guess he's supposed to be fine over it. Um, just the kind of horse that you tend to like. You can do whatever you want with him. He runs for anybody. He can get any kind of a trip in the race. I mean, there's plenty to like about this horse. We'll see what kind of price he is. Now, usually in these sort of stakes races on the turf, we look at a horse is claimed by Mike Maker. The number four Artie's rumor was claimed off Mike Maker by Ron Moquet for $40,000 last time out at Churchill Downs. And he got a very nice trip to win that race. There was some pace in front of him. He sat a loose pocket on the inside and he was able to get by as the favorite. This horse has some back class. He's an 11-time winner. Let's see if he can do it against stakes horses. Yeah, step in, they're going to step him back up now off the claim. Maker did the same thing. Maker claimed this horse for 40 as well um, and did get him into really good form, but he finally had to drop him back down last time, Dan, because he just really wasn't um, that competitive against some tougher fields. They dropped him last time. He won. Um, he's another horse who's very tactical and who has the figures that suggest he's going to be a contender right back. 12 time winner popular kid might be slightly better on the main track he was able to run in a off the turf race over muddy going at lone star last time and he won by the length of the stretch oh for 14 on turf but the last time he raced on the surface he caught a sharp horse that came back to win a stake bread stake at lone star with an 89 buyer yeah he did face a good field he's faced good fields in his last three starts on the grass um, but he still feels like he's just a horse who's way better on the dirt 
tap it wise the number six has only raced once previously on turf that was last fall at monmouth in a race where there wasn't a lot of pace he tried to rally from well off of it i guess he's still unexposed on the turf but my hunch is he's going to be a better dirt horse yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I actually tried pretty hard to make this horse in this race just to see if he could, you know, be some kind of a price and maybe actually be okay on the turf. There's really not a ton of pedigree for him to be a turf horse. And, you know, even though in that Monmouth race last October, I mean, he just got caught wide every step of the way. He also just didn't do any running at all. Here's the grade one winner, Henley's Joy, winner of the Belmont Derby in 2019 at a giant price, but he hasn't won since, and he's burned money as the favorite in his last two races at Sam Houston. I would never sell this horse short, but could you find an excuse for his last race on April the 3rd? He just saved ground to no avail the way I looked at it. I mean, me too. I mean, I, they dropped him, finally dropped him in class for his last two starts. It was, you know, a long time coming for them to try to get this horse a confidence boost. Um, it just hasn't worked, Dan. His last two races just aren't very good, um, even with the class relief. So we'll see what he does. I mean, he's still a really likable kind of horse, but he's pretty hard to take if he takes any money at all in here. Mike, we're familiar with the eight colloquists who began his career in New York, but it took him to head on down to Texas and get into the Danny Pish barn to finally reach his full potential. Five races in Texas, three wins, two runner-up efforts, including this win on June the 12th. Now he steps up in class, but he looked really good last time, I thought. I agree. He's gotten a lot better since Danny Pish has taken over this horse and gotten him stretched back out in distance. I mean, his races are good. He was no match for um, Carly's dream two starts back when that horse just got loose on the lead. Um, but other than that, I mean, this horse's form has really turned around and he's another horse who could get a good trip in this race. Completing the field is Hard Attack, who got a really nice ride last time out by the veteran Stuart Elliott in that Lone Star race, where he was able to maneuver himself down to the inside on the backstretch and save some ground in behind the leaders. From this post position against these kind of horses, that trip might not be available. Oh, yeah, probably not. And he's a horse who I think he still has a, he has a lot to prove against horses like this, too. He's sort of a reformed claiming type. He did run well last time, but he's got to run even better than that. Wide open race, the Sunday race of the day, the single Terry. Let's take a look at our top picks. You're a big fan of me and Mr. C. He's got tactical speed. I think he's going to tuck in behind the leaders. Uh, and Carly's Dream, the number one, has got big early speed. You like those two horses. Carly's Dream, probably a slightly better price. Yeah, I kept it down towards the inside. Um, I'm a me and Mr. C fan. I'll definitely use that horse. But I'm going to try to wire this field with the one. Hardy's rumored to me is interesting off the claim for Moquette to put him in this spot. He's been a solid hard hitter throughout his career. Now we'll have to see if he can do it against stake sources. I think five to one based on his form and figs is a fair price. Four, two, one, three for me. One, two, four, three for Mike. Same super, different order for the Sunday DRF race of the day. The Singletary at Lone Star. Best of luck.